family is an integral part of most people's lives. We've always dreamt of a happy family, that we are a part of a happy one, or that we never have to experience a broken one. But to live the reality, it truly would affect people differently. In this week's story, we are travelling back to the 90s, back to Texas, to cover the story of a bright girl that was situated in a rather not so ideal family. Some might say a victim of a broken home. This is the story of Dory Murray Robards. The story began with Stephen Robards. He married a girl named Beth in 1974. They were high school sweethearts and after they finished their school, they decided to get married right after. They were blessed with a daughter in 1977, a girl they named Marie. The small family settled in Fort Worth, Texas, but their marriage was not meant to be. Stephen was showing symptoms of depression and he was venting his anger to Beth and Marie. They fought numerous times and in the end, the marriage ended in divorce six years later in 1980. Marie went with her mother and left his father's house back in Fort Worth. Beth stayed single only for a year before she was remarried to another divorced widower, Frank Burroughs. They all moved to his home in Granbury, Texas, as he was working as a police officer there. Even though she has moved to Granbury, Marie always tried to meet with Stephen once or twice a month. Her mother never complained, as Marie was closer to her rather than her father. They were very close, and they understand each other very well. Beth was very proud of her daughter, as she was very polite and obedient. She excelled at school too. I guess for most, she was the perfect little daughter. Life was good for both Marie and Beth. They lived as a happy family for quite a while. Until 11 years later, in 1992, something happened. Marie just got home after her school, and she heard two voices, a man and a woman frolicking around. She came around and she saw Frank was with another woman on the sofa, not Beth, her mother. She screamed at them. This surprised the both of them, and the women got up and left frantically. Frank acted nervously, and he tried to apologize, but Marie wouldn't have it. She was disgusted at him. She told her mother right after, and true enough, a big fight ensued. Beth and Frank discussed the matter at length while Marie was on the sideline. A few hours later, Beth met with Marie. She explained that she forgave Frank. She told Marie that she felt partly responsible for Frank's cheating as she was too busy working at the hospital these past few years. Surely, Marie was disappointed with her mother. Every time she saw Frank, she was reminded of his cheating and it disgusted her, until she decided that she couldn't take it anymore. She needed to move out of this house. She did not want to live under the same roof as Frank. She moved to her grandparents' house soon after. But only a few days later, she was not feeling it. She wanted to go back to her mother and Frank's house. But to her surprise, Frank said no. She can't live there anymore, according to Frank because he has a set of rules forbidding his children, biological or otherwise, not to leave his house, or they would not be allowed to come back at all. He did not want his children to be able to just leave the house whenever there's a problem. Marie cried profusely, begging to come back, but even Beth could not talk Frank out of this rule. In the end, Beth decided it might be best for Marie to move back to her father's place in Fort Worth. Beth hoped that maybe someday Frank would relent and let Marie move back once again. Stephen, on the other hand, felt so happy that her daughter is moving back with him. Emotionally 
Stephen has been feeling better. He has been getting treatment and he even has a girlfriend now, Sandra. But Marie was not happy. His father has been living in a small and messy apartment. It was a bachelor pad with a single bedroom. She even had to sleep in the kitchen. Due to her living conditions, she was complaining to her mother constantly. At some point, she mentioned she was even considering suicide. Hearing this, Beth scolded Marie and told her to be grateful for her life, that she should be patient and be a grown-up. She heeded her, and months later, Beth heard that things had improved with Marie. Her grades were better, and her relationship with Stephen was also improving. Until one day, in February 1993, Stephen went for a church meeting, but he didn't feel so well. He went back for home to rest, but his condition was worsening. He vomited. His stomach hurt even more. Seeing him suffering, Marie called Sandra to come over. Sandra was surprised to see Stephen lying on the bed with his hands and legs stiff to the touch. Stephen even said he couldn't swallow his saliva. Panic, Sandra called the ambulance. Oxygen was inserted through a tube down his throat, but it was too late. Stephen did not make it. He passed away soon after. He was declared dead due to a heart attack. And Marie was just there, standing still during the whole ordeal. During his burial, Beth came over to pay respect as well as accompanying her daughter. And during the service, out of nowhere, Beth told Marie that they might have to move to Florida. Beth and Frank have decided to take a break from each other, as their relationship has not been great this past months. Hearing this, Marie was shocked. She stared at her mother in disbelief. All this time, Beth has been planning to move out without telling Marie beforehand. She got a government job in Panama City, Florida, and they moved together by March 93. All seemed well, but somehow Marie was quieter than usual. She seemed depressed, and sometimes she didn't have the energy to get out of the bed. She was sent to a psychiatrist, but to no avail. But a few months later, out of nowhere, Frank visited Beth in Florida. They talked at length and eventually reconciled back together. Beth did not want another divorce and thought Frank had changed for the better. Even Marie was convinced. However, soon enough Marie found out that Frank had kept a love letter under his pillow. A love letter from another woman. Marie was furious and told her mother that she was disappointed and she wanted to move back to Fort Worth, Texas back to his grandparents' house. After a while, things quieted down for a bit. She became her usual self. Her grades were improving. She also joined theatre and the Foley team. She became the star student again, until she met with Stacy. Both of the girls did not have their fathers anymore. Somehow, this made them feel connected. They became close friends soon enough. One day, while doing their assignments on Shakespeare's Hamlet, they were discussing Claudius, the antagonist of the story, how he was a selfish, manipulative, cunning and cruel figure who was able to kill his brother for the throne and the king's wife. Suddenly, Marie burst into tears and she confessed to Stacy the sin she had committed. Marie told Stacy that she had killed her father, Stephen. She told her that in February 1993, she stole barium acetate powder from a school lab. When she got back home, she poured the powder onto his father's food. He ate it and he was gone just a few hours later. She saw him dying and she knew she was the one who did it. But everyone else never suspected any foul play. For them, it was just another inevitable heart attack. Marie made Stacy promise not to tell another soul. This is her darkest secret that no one else knows, just Stacy. Stacy surely was conflicted, and later 
she confided to her mom of what she just heard. Stacy's mom did not believe her at first, but after some research on barium acetate's effects on the person, she was somewhat convinced she let her daughter decide what to do with the secret. At first, Stacy wanted to keep it under wraps, but she could not bear the nightmares she'd been having ever since. And eventually, she told the police what she had heard. The police were stunned to hear the story. Who would have thought Marie, a teenager, would kill her biological father? The police needed to make a thorough investigation. Proper evidence was needed before anything else was done. Fortunately, Stephen's blood sample was still well preserved and as detecting barium acetate could not be done in any regular machine, the police needed three months to process the sample. By then, Stacy and Marie had graduated from high school and they had moved to different universities. During those three months, Stacy was suffering on her own. She was struggling mentally. She even needed to consult a psychiatrist. But eventually, in October 1994, the result came back and it was positive. Stephen's blood was positive for barium acetate. Marie was detained and was put on trial. She told the judge that she did not want to kill her father. She just wanted to make him sick enough so that maybe she could be let go and move back to her mother's house. But her defense was rejected by the prosecutors because the court believed her mother would not take Marie back just because Stephen had been well for a few days. The prosecutors instead believed that she intended to kill her father anyway, so that like it or not, her mother would surely take her back to live with her. Furthermore, the way she acted upon seeing her father's condition convinced the court further of her intention. She did not call the paramedics instantly, as any daughter would do. But instead, she called Sandra, the girlfriend, to help her do just that. In the end, around May 1996, the court sentenced Marie to 27 years in prison with a chance of a parole in 7 years. Her mother Beth said that she was sorry that she did not inform Marie about her decision to move to Florida. If she had just told her a week earlier, maybe Stephen would still be alive. Marie served her sentence, but she was released in 2003, and she had changed her identity since then. That's it for the story, guys. What do you think of the story? Do you think the story would end differently if Marie kept a secret? Do you think there are victims like Stephen, who were poisoned by the close ones, but remain undetected? Don't forget to subscribe, like, and comment. Until next week, cheers!